Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by. Welcome to the Modular Mining Systems. Stick to the plan, how high-precision GPS can save your time and money webinar. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode. If you would like to ask a question during the presentation, please use the chat feature located in the lower left corner of your screen. If you need to reach an operator at any time, please press star zero. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded Tuesday, December 13th, 2011. I would now like to turn the conference over to Andrew Kroos. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Andrew Kroos. Um, really appreciate everybody joining us today. This is actually the second webinar in a series of webinars we hope to hear. Um, we're very fortunate to have attendees joining us from six different continents. The first webinar that we held about six weeks ago was on the topic of predictive maintenance. We hope that was interesting for you. Our next webinar, which we hope to hold in about uh, six weeks, will be on the topic of fatigue management in mines. As mentioned earlier, we will have a product specialist available to answer your questions that you submit via chat. Um, we greatly appreciate uh, those questions coming in. The especially interesting ones we will hold back and answer aloud during a question and answer session at the end of the meeting. Today's presenter is William Nassar. Bill has spent 14 years in the mining industry, uh, most currently as product manager of our machine uh, guidance products. Prior to that, Bill has spent time in project management and account management with mine customers all over the world. Beyond mining, Bill also has experience in general business, having spent time consulting and working with General Motors, and holds an MBA. Today we hope this uh, presentation covers the bigger picture of how machine guidance can help mines improve their profitability and the, the larger business picture uh, as, as uh, machine guidance will help you. I'll now turn it over to Bill, and I look forward to uh, uh, hearing those questions. Thanks, Bill. Yes, hello everyone. Um, so I'm Bill Nassauer, and uh, as Andrew said, I'm the product manager for machine guidance systems at Modular Mining. It's my pleasure to host this machine guidance webinar. It's the first one that we've done in, in this subject area, so I hope you find it to be an interesting and informative look at how you can use this technology in your mind to obtain real, consistent benefits of saving time and money. As with all our presentations, this is our standard legal language. Just uh, please keep in mind that this presentation is provided by Modular Mining and is not intended to be copied or dispersed without our express permission. Here is what I decided to cover in today's session. Uh, I thought we would begin with a quick, uh, quick explanation of what machine guidance systems are and what they do in mining, and talk about the benefits that they can provide to the typical mining operation. I will also show one way to do a simple calculation estimating the actual savings that these systems can provide. So let's get started. So just a little bit of history. Um, the first machine guidance systems came into the mining market in the mid-1990s. Modular was one of the early pioneers in this technology. Um, our first offering was a shovel system and then later drills and dozers. Initially, the, the value that these systems could provide was not clearly understood by many mining companies. And just like any new technology, there were some early adopters that paved the way and helped the industry mature in this area. Um, the first systems were somewhat complicated and expensive. The United States uh, GPS or, or Navstar was the only positioning system available initially. Um, but then uh, dual band receivers arrived, which took advantage of the Russian GLONASS system. But these systems rapidly improved and matured. Modular, for one, is now in its third generation of high-precision machine guidance systems, and some of our competitors are as well. Uh, we've seen this technology become standard practice now in mines across the world, as the benefits are becoming easier to measure, integration is becoming tighter, and in this period of high profitability, mines are looking to invest in technology anticipating the cyclic nature of the industry and wanting to improve efficiency. These modern systems are much more efficient and easier to use, and they have increased in precision as they start to take in data from additional satellite constellations, 
and also provide compatibility with ground-based augmentation or, or Terralytes. Integration has also improved with uh, direct interfaces being developed with major mine planning packages. And as mines have implemented broadband networks across their sites, we can take advantage of this capacity to perform more advanced tasks and share data across units much more easily. In my opinion, there are some essential elements that make up a good machine guidance system. First, uh, these systems calculate the precise location and orientation of a piece of equipment in the field. In order to do this, they rely on High Precision Global Navigation Satellite System, or, or GNSS, receivers, which utilize both uh, the US GPS and Russia's GLONASS satellites. And in the future, the European Union's Galileo and China's Compass systems will also be available and taken advantage of in these receivers. So together with a reference ground station, these, these systems are typically able to calculate the position of a unit in the field to within sub-centimeter accuracy. Second, this positional information is presented to the machine operator in the context of his or her work environment to help with decision making. This means showing where the machine is positioned related to features in the work area, such as the dig face, material blocks, hazards, virtual dig limits, other equipment, desired elevation, etc. And third, the system creates and stores in a central database detailed records of operational and geospatial data from the machine to determine what it was doing at a given point in time, both current and past. Fourth, machine guidance systems provide and receive this data to and from other systems, such as mine planning packages or other GIS systems. For example, the mine may export shovel advancement and uh, material block depletion into its planning system for working on the short-term plan. They may import surface contours of dumps from their planning system, or they may keep track of holes drilled and use stratification data received from the system to update the block model. And fifth, in order to minimize the creation of multiple operator interfaces and in order to validate and integrate data more fluidly, machine guidance systems should integrate with fleet management systems such as modular dispatch systems. This is especially true for shovels, which are an integral part of the load haul dump production cycle. So now let's talk about the financial benefits of these systems. First, uh, keep in mind the simple measure of profit, which is revenue minus costs. In order to maximize profit, we want to minimize costs and maximize our revenue, which seems pretty obvious. Uh, machine guidance systems can help mines improve profitabil profitability by doing both of these things. The systems can help both reduce cost and increase revenue, essentially by producing more with less. So starting with cost reduction, here are three major categories where machine guidance systems can help. First, elimination of rework. This is one source of unnecessary cost in every mining operation. Here's a couple of examples. Suppose you send surveyors out into the field every day to measure the progress of your shovels. Upon checking, you determine that after digging out a large area, the shovel did not go deep enough and now you need to cut it further. Uh, you've created a bunch of rework here. The shovel needs to go back and remove the excess material. Auxiliary units need to return to support this. And don't forget that you need to send the surveyors back again to recheck progress. Um, another example, uh, the shovel is digging a recently blasted area and runs into extremely hard ground. It turns out that the drill that worked the bench before blasting did not drill deep enough, leaving a chunk of unblasted material at the base of the bench. In this case, you've got to stop digging and send auxiliary units to break up this material before proceeding. Again, more rework. Um, another area of cost reduction is around the usage of scarce resources, meaning both human resources and also consumables such as fuel, explosives, etc. And finally, machine guidance can even help in lowering maintenance costs such as the replacement of shovel teeth, drill parts, etc. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. So rework was a big one. I already mentioned uh, a couple examples of rework. 
And here are ways that we can avoid that. First, we can save lots of people and machine costs by doing a better job of controlling elevation on benches or project areas, such as in the process of constructing ramps or dumps. Um, therefore, by digging out or building these areas precisely according to the plan, we can control drainage, maybe by maintaining uh, a flat bench or perhaps by implementing a 1% grade. We can create smooth benches, which need less dozing or grading activities to fix mistakes or uh, cut and fill for a shovel that dug too low or too high. And we can build projects with less supervision because we don't need to keep checking how close to plan the work is being done. Here is a specific example from one of our client sites where they were able to dramatically improve elevation control. On this chart, you see the difference between actual shovel elevation and the planned elevation, uh, which in this case was averaging more than three meters. The next chart shows the same variation after implementing our provision system. Uh, this mine uh, improved the variation on bench accuracy from over three meters down to under 40 centimeters. You can imagine that a tremendous amount of cost savings comes out of this due to the avoidance of rework. Another error of rework that can be reduced using uh, machine guidance systems is related to blast yields. And this can be done by using these systems on drill rigs. By precisely controlling drilling operations, you get the benefits of optimum fragmentation. Uh, this is possible using machine guidance systems to maintain proper hole spacing, drill to the desired depth, and gather stratification data to generate a hardness profile for each hole, which in turn is used for optimum explosive loading. Uh, you get elimination of unblasted parts of the toe, which is also done by controlling drilling depth. You avoid the need to re-drill holes or add unplanned holes due to mistakes in positioning. And you get reduction in rock breaker hours at the crusher due to better fragmentation after blasting. Finally, by providing all of this data online and in real time to both operators and engineers, there is a greatly diminished need to send surveyors out into the field to check and recheck progress. Machine guidance systems can eliminate regular surveys. Instead of having to perform surveys daily, it may only need to be done once per week as a validation activity. They can also eliminate the need to stake or mark holes, dig limits, material boundaries, etc. Since all this information is imported digitally into the system and available to the operator when and where it's needed. A side benefit of this is less time needed to explain in detail what the operator should find in the field and less guessing under poor visibility situations. Instead of this, the information is all on the operator screen. So aside from rework, we also identified that costs could be reduced in the use of mine resources. The most valuable resources on site are human resources and especially with scarce talent available in the mining industry today, everyone is overworked and their time is especially limited. Machine guidance systems can help save time for your people in many ways, and one of these we just talked about, reducing the demands on your surveyors. Some other areas are safety. By avoiding having people go out into the field to survey and stake, or to be continually monitoring progress, dozing a new ramp, etc you are removing an important source of accidents, and that is having people out in the field exposed to hazards. In addition, mine guidance systems, machine guidance systems, are capable of performing precise proximity detection, which can save lives, and also the cost from machine damages. Automated data generation. Getting data that has been generated in real time and importing this into other systems in a format that requires minimal manipulation requires significantly reduced effort on the part of mine planners. And also delays in the field due to supporting activities such as surveying, measuring drill hole depth, etc., are reduced because these processes become automated.
Another resource that represents a large cost for mining operations is fuel. And this one is, is a bit harder to quantify, but there are material savings that machine guidance systems can provide in fuel consumption. You can do this by avoiding sending loads to the wrong place, by completing dozing projects with a minimal amount of machine movement since the operator is much better informed as to actually where to cut, where cut and fill needs to happen, by avoiding moving material more than one time due to better identification of loaded material and blends, and by guiding equipment operators such as trucks on an optimal path to an assigned location or showing where to spot on the first attempt. You can also create tangible savings in explosive and explosive by using machine guidance systems to optimize your blasts. Precise characteristics of each hole are gathered during the drilling process, and these can be factored in before charging the blast. For example, the shovel can provide detailed strata data from various sensors sampled during drilling. Actual hole placement is precisely stored, which allows the planned blast to be adjusted accordingly and depth is measured during drilling as well. So let's consider uh, another real example from two of our customers in 2008. Uh, this graph on this page illustrates a before and after implementing modular system on 20 drills. By controlling the use of explosives according to the sensor data gathered by this system, they were able to reduce explosive consumption by more than 20%. So as you can see, the savings here can be quite dramatic. The last area of um, okay, the last area of cost savings I'll mention is that related to maintenance costs. This is usually a bit more subtle, but there are specific areas where these benefits can occur. And one of these areas is using the machines more effectively and avoiding putting them into damaging situations. For example, by avoiding running shovel teeth into overly hard material, you can avoid damaging them. Uh, reduce stress on hydraulic systems or minimize metal fatigue in the shovel boom. You can also get more production hours between PMs through higher utilization and less rework. You can avoid equipment damage by creating smoother surfaces. Um, through integration with maintenance management systems, premature failures can be avoided and catastrophic failures can be detected in advance. So now that we've covered some ways in which these systems can lower your operating costs, let's talk about ways of enhancing your productivity, which would be more of a revenue effect on profitability. A couple of ways we can do this include improving your ability to manage material movement more effectively, such as increasing ore recovery or providing to the plant precisely what it needs at the moment it needs it. Also, we can improve the productivity of the machine itself by making the maximum use of its available time. Obviously, mining pit operations is all about moving material from one place to another. But not just any material. The key is the right material at the right time. Doing this in the most efficient way possible and avoiding wasting valuable ore can make the difference between huge profits or huge losses. The mine planning process is designed to produce material in sync with resource availabilities and plant capacity, and deviation from this plan causes waste. With the use of machine guidance systems, you can have much better understanding and control of how precise to plan you're working and be able to make necessary adjustments to stay on track. For example, by using the mine block model, we know exactly what is being loaded into each truck and what material blend is going to the crusher. This makes fine-tuning possible and improves the consistency and quality of material being sent there. This way you can also avoid uh, dirty loads, meaning loads that contain a little bit of one material when you're actually trying to mine another. In cases where they do occur, you can decide how to handle them at that very moment. All this leads to increased ore recovery, since you eliminate instances of erroneously sending ore to the waste dump or putting waste through the crusher. It also means you have better understanding of what's in your stockpile inventories 
And in a similar way, your low-grade dump composition, which means you can do more effective recovery of this ore in the future. And finally, higher machine productivity means more revenue per operating hour. By using machine guidance and avoiding rework, the machine spends more time producing and less time addressing complications or fixing mistakes. Also, if you use these systems to communicate the plan to equipment operators by showing dig limits, desired surface designs, or material blocks, you increase equipment utilization. And finally, you can work closely according to plan with clarity around dig limits and project boundaries. So we're going to take a, a, a brief pause here. I'm going to throw up a survey based on what Bill has talked about. Uh, it might be interesting to get some responses on for, for uh, us and, and the attendees. And while uh, we're responding to that, I'll take a, a question from the audience that I think is interesting and have Bill respond to it. <clears throat> the question is, I believe the high precision system has to have very reliable GPS. How reliable is the GPS in order to minimize or eliminate rework? Bill? Yeah, well, um, GPS systems, the, these high precision GPS systems, as I mentioned, uh, are extraordinarily precise. You can get, um, uh, you know, the center position or, or rather the antenna position in reality of, um, of a shovel or a dozer or drill or, or whatever um, within less than a centimeter of its actual position. Um, and then that translate, you know, with equipment dimensions and um, information that's been configured in the system, we know exactly where the bucket position is of a shovel, for example, or where the blade is on a dozer. And therefore, we can tell um, elevation, detailed elevation information and, and be able to identify very specific, uh, very precise dig points. Um, in reality, the total error is the sum of all of this. So you have to have very good measuring of the, uh, of the dimensions of the equipment. But if you work uh, with your surveyors to, to do this very precisely and uh, fine-tune uh, actual measurements, uh, you know, surveyed measurements versus those that the system is measuring, you can actually get it to be extremely precise. We usually say um, easily within 10 centimeters uh, as far as bucket positioning and, uh, and uh, you know, blade elevation for, for dozers in order to calculate productivity. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll, we'll skip to those uh, results. We've got quite a few great responses in on that. Um, hope everybody got a chance to weigh in. I think those are some very interesting spread of responses. Um, and then we'll continue on with the um, discussion of, of how, you know, a financial example. Bill? Yeah, so let me show you an easy way um, that uh, modular value-add services folks have identified to calculate the potential value of, uh, in this case, a, a shovel machine guidance system. This spreadsheet is available from us if you'd like to play with it. Uh, the idea here is to make some estimations of certain savings in specific areas and quantify them based on assumptions regarding your typical costs. Uh, the values we're starting with here may not be realistic for you, and you should treat this as just an example. However, we found in some cases that the savings here uh, can be achieved. Uh, the numbers in green are constants, starting with some basic mine properties such as square meters of area moved per year, average bench height, average truck size, and average spot and queue time in uh, minutes per load. Uh, the percentage of misdirected loads is a number that depends on your operation and should reflect your best estimate. Uh, the value of each ton of material comes from the market value of whatever it is that you are mining. Um, all of the cost numbers here are very mine specific and normally mines do not share this information with us so we're left to guess based on what we know about the industry. Um, the number of dozer hours spent preparing the bench uh, per year factors in and also the number of hours you spend surveying on each bench. So after figuring out all these constants for your site, you need to estimate the reduction in time required for dozer hours supporting the shovel, spot, queue time, and the percentage of misdirected loads that you could avoid, and the savings in surveyed hours for the bench. The numbers that are here, we believe, are actually achievable in, uh, based on what we've observed over the years, um, although um, you know, for your specific uh, circumstances, we, we work with you and we can determine what's, you know, what's most appropriate. 
In the end, uh, you get your annual, annual savings for each shovel. So in this example, it comes out to nearly 200000 in in only one year, which would uh, much more than recover the initial cost of that system. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Bill. It uh, seems very, very comprehensive. Um, so we'll now go ahead and, and jump into the Q&A section, and I'll read a few more of the questions that have come in via the chat. Um, one of the questions is uh, around calibration and, and how the system is calibrated and how that works. Uh, could you go into a little bit of detail on that? Calibration. Well, usually calibration only needs to be happen one time during the installation of a piece of, uh, of, a piece of equipment because the... Um, uh, you know, during installation, the um, the high precision GPS antennas are mounted on the back uh, of of the shovel, at least in our case, and uh, that position is uh, is permanent. Uh, and then, basically, the process of calibration consists of having surveyors uh, take points on the shovel and points on the ground to measure the actual dimensions of the equipment and how far. Um, you know how far out the bucket is. The actual bucket distance uh, can be done in two different ways. If you have a um, a rope shovel, um, the distance is usually a fixed offset. If we have uh, if you have a hydraulic shovel, um, at least with our system, we offer a um, a bucket positioning system that tells us the actual location of the bucket in three dimensions, and so that actually helps when uh, you know calculating out the uh, uh, you know how far the the toe and the crest are from the shovel. It's a, it's a little bit more accurate, um, but that's pretty much it. Calibration is a is a fairly straightforward process, and and like I said, there's some tweaking that needs to be done initially because usually uh, what you've you've measured, uh, you know, you, you adjust it a little bit because you have to uh, you know do some survey checks at the beginning to make sure that it's right and and, and inevitably it's it's always off by a little bit but when you get it dialed in it's it's done sure um next question that came in is what block model information can be loaded into uh, shovels uh, block by block or larger areas yeah so um there's actually two different ways that um you can load um material information into uh, at least our system. Uh, you can do it either using large material polygons. Um, I say large, but in reality they're whatever um, dimensions that uh, you've set up uh, that, that come out of your mine planning system. Um, or you can actually import into the system a uh, three-dimensional block model, um, which obviously also comes from your planning systems. Uh, the difference is, is that a material polygon has uh, one set of, uh, y you know, the percentage grades and the, the actual um, the specifications of the material uh, is, is considered uniform throughout, whereas the block model is actually, um, you know, uniform blocks uh, of uh, material that have uh, different characteristic characteristics, each of them. And it's usually a bit more, um, a bit, bit more uh, precise because those blocks are a lot smaller. So what typically happens is uh, a shovel um, working in an area may actually pick up a couple of buckets from two different blocks, and what's put into the the truck, what's actually what the system actually records as going into the truck is an average of uh, of those buckets and the characteristics of the block that they came from. Um. Last question, or another question that's come in uh, most recently is, how accurate is the dipper position calculated? And, and that probably goes back to the calibration as well. Yeah, calibration is important, um, but um, the way our system works is the dipper position is actually um, identified because we have a um, uh, we have a, a connection basically to the dipper relay on cable shovels and um, and the uh, the dipper actuator on uh, on hydraulic shovels, and so we know um, when the material is dropped into the truck. And from there, there's algorithms that basically look back and see how far the shovel swung on the last uh, the last uh, swinging motion, and and we can calculate where that dig point came from and where the the bucket was uh, at that point in time. Um, it's something you know, and, and obviously it's it's a quite a bit more complex than that. The, the algorithm actually tries to filter out uh, um, 
you know, different circumstances when the shovel is moving around a bit more. And, um, well, we've done some testing recently, and we've discovered that it's about 97% accurate, which is uh, was actually a little bit better than I would have anticipated. So uh, very happy with that. Uh, one additional question that came in that's uh, fairly interesting, especially given the recent news and autonomous haulage. Uh, and, and Bill, I apologize if um, catches you off guard or you're not able to speak on this, but how similar is the high precision GPS in our machine guidance um, compared to some of the recent autonomous systems out there on the market? Uh, well, the, the GPS system itself is um, is pretty much the same. I know for our autonomous systems, the um, they, they use the same GPS receivers and the same GPS antenna, so it, it's really exactly the same thing. The only difference is that the high, the, the autonomous systems incorporate um, a lot more um, other radars and sensors to you know determine uh, relative machine positioning and and, uh, and things like that. But the the navigation system is the same. So in terms of of provision, you truly are getting the the top of the line in in uh, technology in this arena. That's right. Our, our our receivers really are top of the line. I mean, there's um, we're taking advantage of all available satellites, um, and we're definitely committed to in the future as um, the Galileo and, and Compass satellites come online to to take advantage of them as well. A uh, follow-on question to that that came in, um, asking you to be a bit of a um, uh, forecast into the future. But uh, Bill, where do you see this technology coming? Ha have we reached the the peak of what high precision offers, or um, what might be added, uh, especially in your ProVision lineup, um, that could that could aid our uh, customers and audience? Yeah, no. There's obviously uh, there's there's many many things to come and many things that we're working on. Some some of which I can't comment on, uh, obviously. But um, th there's a uh, one area in particular that we're working is uh, is around uh, truck truck navigation. Um, we've had a lot of uh, feedback over the years. Uh, customers interested in uh, in truck uh, systems. Um, and uh, we're, we're definitely working on that uh, over the, the next coming couple of years. You should be seeing some uh, some major advancements in that area. Um, aside from that, um, you know, we're we're trying to leverage, uh, and, and you know, with regard to those truck systems, we're we're definitely trying to leverage the uh, autonomous experience that we have. And uh, um, you know, aside from truck systems, to to also use high precision in, in some other innovative areas such as. Uh, for uh, for blasting engineers, for uh, uh, other auxiliary units, and so so there's actually a lot of room for us to grow. It's uh, good to hear, especially since we just launched the Provision 3 uh, product earlier this year. So uh, good to see we're still making strides in that that room. Uh, that uh, takes us through about all the questions that have come in. Uh, there may be a few that we've missed that we'll follow up with you individually on. And we definitely encourage you to contact us if you'd like us to go through those calculations, in particular with your mind or your, your instance. Um, we uh, will uh, uh, make this publicly available uh, for those of you who have attended and would like to listen to it as a follow-up. And we uh, definitely encourage you to register for our next webinar, which will be on the topic, again, of fatigue management. Uh, thank you again, and appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude today's conference. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your lines.